Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and today Apple has released iOS 14.6 to the public. After going through three beta stages and of course the RC version, we finally have iOS 14.6 here and in this video we're going to talk about more than 20 new features and changes that you will be able to find on this update. Of course, we're going to talk also about battery life, performance, bugs, bug fixes, and of course, whether you should update or not your device right now to iOS 14.6. Let's start off with the size of the update. Now I got iOS 14.6 right here on the iPhone 12 Pro Max at around four gigs. It was a bit over four gigs. That's of course quite large for an update that doesn't have a ton of new features, but again, it will be quite big. That of course will be also different on different devices and it should be different also based on which software you have currently installed on your device. So you probably will get it maybe at a smaller size. Now going back, here and going to the about section let's take a look at the build number of ios 14.6 so here we have the build number which is 18f71 that's the new build number for ios 14.6 Moving on to the new features and changes of iOS 14.6. Now, one of them, which is really, really cool, is the new feature of music recognition, which is basically Shazam built into iOS. You know that we got this feature a while ago, but when you recognize one of the songs and you tap on the notification, it used to take you to the Shazam website. Now, what it does, it actually opens the app clip of Shazam. Even though you don't have Shazam installed on your device, it will automatically install the app clip of Shazam once you update to iOS 14.6. You will also see it right here on your app library and of course you can run it from here which is actually really cool and if you go to the settings and go to the app clip section which you can find right here at the top of the apps list on the settings app you will find app clips here you can see Shazam right there. You go into it and you will be able to actually download the full app on your device directly from here or if you want to you can completely remove the new Shazam app clip from your device which again will be automatically installed on your device once you update to iOS 14.6. Now, Apple is bringing a ton of new changes and, of course, new features to Apple Music. Now, one of them is, of course, looseless audio. Basically, looseless music is coming to iOS, to your Apple Music, but it doesn't support the AirPods, doesn't support the AirPods Pro, doesn't support the AirPods Max, and doesn't support the HomePod. That, of course, is very, very disappointing for a lot of people. But again, that's basically due to the limitations of the Bluetooth connection not being able to transmit that kind of quality. So what we got here, as you can see on the music app, when you go to one of the albums, you will see right here, Apple Digital Master. You have this new badge and Apple Music is getting spatial audio. That's an amazing feature that will come, which I believe for most users, for regular day users, will be even better than looseless music and probably will even just feel the difference way, way more. And the good thing is that the spatial music, spatial audio, whatever you want to call it, will support all the AirPods, the AirPods Pro, the AirPods Max, of course. And of course, it will be amazing as many, many people will be able to enjoy music with a spatial audio feature, which again is an amazing feature of iOS. When you install iOS 14.6 on your device and you open a few of the apps for the first time, you will see some new splash screens letting you know about new features. So right here we have one from the Apple TV and it lets you know about Apple Originals and Apple TV channels. And this one from App Store and Arcade and you can see right here it tells you about app privacy details and this one is really interesting from podcasts. It basically lets you know about a new feature that is coming Apple podcast subscriptions. That will be really, really, really interesting. And of course, it lets you know that you can support your favorite podcasters by unlocking ad-free listening and bonus episodes. And of course, podcast channels as well. When talking about podcast subscriptions, you will find now a new page where you can manage your subscriptions on the podcast app. At the top, you tap on your profile, you get this page right here, similar to the one you get on the app store, and you will see your subscriptions right there. 
Apple has gone quite big on the podcast app and they are updating it with a lot of new features. We have some here with iOS 14.6 as well. First of all, the download button there looks kind of different. If you tap on the three dots, you will get here new buttons, one of them to remove downloads. And you can see if you just tap right there, now it shows a pop up right here and it shows it after you delete this, of course, based on the publisher, you might not be able to access this item again. By going here again, you will see another like button that says mark all episodes as played. Basically, this will mark every episode of that podcast as played, which is again really interesting and it shows how Apple is actually having a lot of interest to actually update their podcast app with new features and of course with subscriptions coming. Now, if you move to library, you will also find here a small change downloads now it's downloaded so right here the download section used to say downloads now it has changed to downloaded as we were talking about apple music and all the changes that apple is bringing with looseless music and of course spatial audio and all that we also have a ton of changes here on the music section on the settings app first of all at the top you will get a button where you can enable or disable cellular data for the music app and lower here we'll also find a few other changes you go to streaming quality right here you have none you have high efficiency and also high quality as well and what you can see right here is also a Kodak description for each of the qualities right there now of course with high quality you will get way better audio but it will consume way more data as well now going back here you'll also have download over seller now you have that right here to enable or disable and you will notice like a few changes here a few rearrangements that have been made right here on the music section of the settings app another small change right here is on the apple tv remote that now has a new icon and it will also get this new icon on the control center as well so if you have added the remote to the control center you will see there a new icon as well now this one is really interesting if we go to software update now i do have a beta profile installed on my device and i'm running right here ios 14.6 but as you probably know ios 14.7 has been released on its first beta and you can see right here at the bottom it shows that it's available right now and if i want to i can keep on staying on ios 14.7 and it doesn't give me an update but if i want to i can go ahead and choose to update to ios 14.7 that's really really cool but if i don't want to do that i can keep on going to the like public releases of ios 14.6 and that's an amazing feature to have a very very important new feature that apple has added to ios 14.6 has to do with voice control so if you're someone that uses voice control and you need it on your device, this will be very welcomed. So if you go right here under voice control and enable it, you know that whenever you reboot your device, you won't be able to actually use it without unlocking it. But a new feature that Apple has added to iOS 14.6 will allow you to do just that. So let's just go ahead and turn off the device right here. And you will notice once it's rebooted, I will be able to enter the passcode using voice control, of course, without having to enter it manually first. So, you know, every time you reboot your device, you have to enter the passcode, even though you might have touch ID or face ID enabled. So let's just boot up the device. As you can see right now, the device has booted and I will actually now unlock my device using voice control. So let's go ahead and go right here. So tap one, tap two, tap three. And as you can see right here, it does work. Even though you haven't unlocked your device, you just booted it up, you will still be able to actually use voice control to unlock your device. An amazing feature and of course I know it's very very welcome for a lot of people that need to use it. Of course one of the biggest features on iOS 14.5 and iOS 14 in general maybe on iOS history as well is the new anti-tracking feature which of course has changed the game. So going here into tracking you will see a button that says allow apps to to request to track now right here on ios 14.6 you will get kind of like a different description right there 
for app tracking so it has changed a lot the wording apple has added some stuff right there so that also has changed from ios 14.5 now another thing that has changed is the ability to actually update your device using cellular data so over the air cellular data updates are not available on more regions that of course will be always region based and maybe even carrier based but if you're one of the lucky ones you will be able to actually update using cellular data i know a lot of people want to do that people have unlimited data and stuff like that they want to do it of course it's not really exactly known on which regions is actually available right now but seems like we have more reports that ios 14.6 enables over the air cellular data updates for more regions moving on to battery life now in my surprise i was 14.6 it's quite good on battery life as i said it even before if you have watched my previous videos on updates of ios 14 i basically had kind of like the same experience with battery life since the release of ios 14.1 i believe but ios 14.6 for me has been quite stable when it comes to battery life nothing like seeing like major drops of battery battery drains and stuff like that is it has been actually quite good and i'm really really impressed with what apple did here so if you think that battery life on ios 14.5 or 14.5.1 is bad i believe ios 14.6 will be way better for you so again when it comes to battery life it looks quite decent and of course we're on 14.6 and you should expect some like that of course ios 14 has been probably almost like a year now since it has been released on its first beta and it should basically be good on battery life and performance now when it comes to performance performance is also quite good very very stable and of course here on newer device it is just flawless it doesn't have like any like glitches or hangs or stuff like that but you might experience some like that on all the devices but we will talk about that in a second so let's just take a look here at the geekbench score so here we have the history moving on to cpu right here and we have here the score for ios 14.6 and we can compare it right here to 14.5 so it's basically the same scores the only change here that you can notice is on the multi-core score we got like 20 more points on ios like 10 actually on ios 14.6 and we have basically 1605 here on the single core score on 14.5 and 1603 on 14.6 so in terms of geekbench scores they look exactly the same and of course on everyday use as well these are both very very good and of course very stable as well now let's talk about bugs that you might find on ios 14.6 now, one of them that I found on iOS 14.6 and I have experienced it on 14.5 as well is like the keyboard not showing here sometimes, it, but for some reason, every time I do a video, it does show up, but a lot of the times it doesn't show up. But of course, that's not really, really serious. Uh, the green tint is actually way more serious than that. Now, you probably have heard about a green tint that's a bug that has been on iOS 14. It was actually like maybe fixed with iOS 14.5. A lot of people reported that it has been fixed and a lot of people are reporting that it came back with iOS 14.6. So if you don't want that, I suggest you stay away from this device for a few, from, from this actual software for a few days until we see whether that's exactly what's happening or not. Also, what I've noticed on Reddit, a lot of reports regarding notifications for iMessage and WhatsApp as well. It looks like these like messaging apps are having problems with notifications, not receiving them or receiving them late. But again, we will probably have to wait until more people get their hands on this software to see whether those are bugs that are affecting the most people or the majority of iOS 14.6 users iOS 14.6 will also fix, of course, a lot of bugs. One of them being very serious was with all the devices, most of them on iPhone 7s, I believe, iOS 14.5 used to reduce the performance of those devices once they booted up. 
confirmed by Apple, this now has been fixed with iOS 14.6 and I've seen also reports by people that it actually it is fixed. Now going to settings and going to privacy and tracking, of course, the new anti-tracking feature, a lot of people have reported this being grayed out right here and not be able to enable this. This is being fixed for a lot of people now with the release of iOS 14.6, but I believe this is also server-based, server -based, so that might be fixed even for older iOS versions. And another here, very, very like annoying under wallpaper section. If you go here to set a wallpaper, I don't know if this has happened to a lot of people, but I had this problem. Basically, this would be blurred and it didn't even show the widgets that I had on the home screen. Now it has been fixed with iOS 14.6. And last but not least, should you update your device to iOS 14.6? Now, of course, this is quite a large update, even though it doesn't have as many features as iOS 14.5. It fixes quite a lot of bugs, but people are also reporting other bugs. Now, in terms of battery and performance, this should be good to go. And I suggest if you're just worried about that, you can update freely to iOS 14.6. But as always, I suggest people wait for a few days to see if any like major bugs or problems are being reported regarding the software. Again, it's not the same as being on dev beta. It's not the same as it being released to the public where millions of people will have their hands on this software. And of course, problems might just erupt and a lot of people might have the same problem. So that's why I suggest people to wait for like a couple of days before they update to major versions like this one. So that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and I'll see you on the next one.